So next speaker coming up, um, how many of you guys work way more hours than you want to work? How many of you guys are feeling burned out? How many of you guys are trying to find a way to get a little bit of your life back? Would that benefit you guys? Would you like to learn how to gain some life back, how to not be working 24-7? Cool. All right. So this, this next young lady is going to come up here, and she's going to share how she's leveraging showing partners, or as she likes to refer to them, production partners in her business, so that she can go out there and be a badass mom. I, I actually ran into her randomly last year. I was in a, on a trip in Charleston, and she was out there with her kids for a baseball tournament. She's a fantastic mom, and an even more fantastic leader, Bic Takara. So, hey, everybody. Hello, I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous as heck being in front of all of you guys, but um, I am just super grateful to be here and uh, just humbled to uh, be here to share with you guys. And I'm just gonna come from a place of contribution because I want to share with you guys what really has changed my life. Um, because all of you guys, you know how it is in real estate, right? It's so easy to get into it, do it, whether because you love it or just because it's a job and you know, you're making a lot of money. Some, I've recently heard a lot of people say they don't love it, they actually don't really wanna do it, but it pays so well, so they're just doing it, right? But for me, I really loved it and um, I couldn't get myself out of this uh, kind of rat race of doing it and the more clients that I was helping was making me feel fulfilled the more I kept doing it. And um, it was kind of a detriment to my family at the time. So um, I wanna share with you guys a little bit, um, when Dan and Kyle had asked me to speak, um, I wanted to pick, they were like, pick something that's like very, uh, that you're very passionate about. And I was looking through, there's so many things I'm passionate about, but this was really something, um, because it goes back to some history in my life. So I'm gonna take you back a little bit and share with you a little bit so that you can understand why it was so important. And um, one other thing that I wanna share with you too is that what I'm gonna talk about is, you know how like everybody gets into real estate and they think that they're supposed to build a team and then get out of production? What I want you to consider is can you still be in production but not work as much? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So, okay, so going back on a little bit of history um, about me, um, let me, hold on one second, let me see if I can, Move this, the power of a production partner, okay. That's a little bit about me. And um, I wanted to kind of just check out with the audience. How many people here um, is still in production? So a good amount of you. Okay, how many people here have a production partner? That's someone that is basically helping you with your own production, not a team buyer's agent that's getting like 50-50 splits or anything like that? Okay, so a few people, that's good. So I'm glad that hopefully what I'm gonna share with you will be helpful and get some of you uh, more to get some production partners out there because a lot of uh, my friends, agent friends out there, um, very successful team leaders have been calling me and asking me about this and so this is why I wanna share it with you guys. And um, so I wanna go back and let you know a little bit about um, my family. And um, in the last 10 years, um, you know, when I was doing this business, I started my team and I had to start my team because I was, like I said, working so much. And um, I thought that when I hired, uh, my first hire was gonna be a buyer's agent. Turned out I actually got, luckily, an executive assistant who helped set up systems for me. And the person that I recruited that I wanted to be my buyer's agent was actually um, too scared to go all in because 100% commission is really scary. So he actually pitched me on the whole production partner thing where I pay him a salary and make some guarantees and turned out that was a really great decision that we did. So um, that guy was my nephew. He was with me for five years. So um, let me go back here and Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. Okay, wanna share with you a little bit about my family. Um, that's my husband and kids, so been married to Brandon almost 20 years, and my daughter's Madison, 17 now, and Luke is 15, and we have two cute dogs, Winnie and Pippa, too. And um, going through here, I also have a team that, uh, I lead a team of 13, um, about half of them are in support roles, and I've also been fortunate enough to grow a group within EXP, what we call our Capital Growth Pioneers, to now 164 agents. Um, yay! We have some Capital Growth Pioneers folks out here. That's our extension of our Fast Forward Movement family. And um, in the 
our team, you guys saw up there, did about 88 million. So with not that many agents, um, sorry, I'm skipping around a little bit, sorry guys. And this here is a picture of my family. Um, my family when we were in Vietnam. So this is one I wanted to share with you guys a little bit. And I don't have many pictures of my family in Vietnam because we came at the fall of Saigon at the end of the war. So I was, um, so in that picture, I'm not actually in that picture because after those pictures were taken, things started to get really bad. So I don't have any pictures of me as a baby or anything. The first pictures that we really have of me at all was when we got to the United States. So um, my family actually lost everything and we came to the US as refugees in 1975. And like I said, I was only one at the time. So luckily for me, I don't really remember any of it, but all of my siblings, they do. And the one that's sitting on the car there with my dad, I always picture that as me, because I don't have any pictures like that. But um, that's my sister, who was 12. When we left Vietnam, she carried me out of the country. And for many years, my family would not talk about um, our history because they saw so many bad things and lost so many people. And, you know, I didn't know anything because I was so young and I was very curious, always asked questions, and nobody would tell me anything. But what I found out was, part of it was because when you go through that kind of trauma, you actually don't remember it. That's how you survive it. So it wasn't like they didn't want to tell me, they really actually blocked it out so that they could really, you know, kind of build their life again here. So, um, I was on a mission to learn more about it, and so only a few years ago, I actually, in 2017, I went back to Vietnam to try to find out some stuff, but a few years ago, I found this picture that gave me some real perspective of what my family went through and how scary it was for them. And with the help of the US, my family actually left Vietnam on a boat that looks like this. Yeah. So when people used to say, oh, you left Vietnam on a boat, like I was thinking like, I don't know, cruise or something. I don't know what was in my mind, you know, like a boat, something else. But I was like, what the heck? Like, you know, I saw that. And that was really shocking to me. And, you know, for my family to be on that and knowing a lot of people, actually, there was another picture too that like a lot of people were left behind. And, you know, what I knew about my family is all fighters, you know, all people that work really hard and really care about, um, you know, one another. So. When we left there, uh, my family obviously was very grateful to make it to the US, and my parents wanted to put us in the safest, safest place that they could think. So what better place to be safe than to be near the president? So they decided on Washington, DC. <laughs> so that's how we landed in Northern Virginia. So that's where we went. Um, so as a kid, I witnessed what um, was a lot of struggle for my family, um, but I really didn't know it was a struggle at the time. Um, my parents were caught up in the race of working nonstop. Um, and the family, we had a family business. All the kids were involved in it, so all the kids were working all the time. And we really didn't have any weekends, and we didn't really know a lot of people because um, my family, there's, there's nine kids in my family. My youngest sister was born in the US. But we worked all the time, and my parents were always like, you know what, you don't need friends. You have siblings, those are your friends. So we didn't really know um, what it was like to kind of um, go and make memories and have fun times together, stuff like that. So one of the saddest things, though, as I grew up and I realized in talking to my other friends was that families had vacation. I didn't know what that was, because we didn't have that. So, but we had each other, so that was a good thing. We had each other. And my siblings were my friends. We did everything together. And we, like I said, didn't know what we were missing, had a great old time. You know, we all worked hard, did our thing. And we really, again, didn't know what we were missing until in college, my dad passed away. It was 66, had a stroke. And I remember thinking, I never went on a vacation with my dad. So that was really heartbreaking for my family and made us all realize how important time is and how precious it is to spend with people. And it's not always about work. What my dad was doing was trying to provide a better life for all of us. You know, we, we had enough, we weren't missing on anything, but that's what he felt like we needed. And so, you know, I made a decision. I was like, I'm not, I don't wanna be like that when I have kids. Well, of course I said that. And then I get into real estate and I started 
working like crazy and not uh, you know, making time for my family and stuff like that. So it was really my husband and my kids that opened my eyes up to it again. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I doing? When, you know, when they were younger and um, they would go do something and my kids felt like I loved my, they were like, do you love your job better than us? And I think when you hear that, it was like, oh my God, no. Like, why would you say that? They're like, you love your job so much. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, like that's crazy. Because I always want to be there for them, but was I really there for them? Because I was always checking my messages and I was always doing all this stuff. And I do love my job, and, um, but I love my family. So I, um, at that point, was around the time that I was like, I really do need to get a team. Um, I was afraid to start the team because I didn't know if I had enough business for everybody, you know, that kind of thing. But anyway, so as we moved along, um, sorry, you guys. <laughs> um, I wanted to be there for my kids. I wanted to kind of make them realize that you know I was going to be involved. I'm not a stay-at-home mom or anything like that, but I wanted to be a volunteer at their school. I wanted them to see me at every game. I wanted them to see me at every recital, so that I was, you know. So I went out of my way to really make sure that I was there for everything, right? And um, it was until I got my production partner that I was able to actually do it in a way that I was not acting like I was just running around, you know, like just being there but not being there. And it was the production partner that helped me with that. So, okay. Um, let me go in here and tell you. Okay, so I wanna go into it now and show you guys a little bit about who's the ideal production partner and how does it make it work? Because a person like me, like probably like most of you guys that get into real estate, you really love what you do. You also are probably type A's, right? How many type A's do we have in here and high D's and want to be involved in everything? So it's hard to let go, right? So you have to make sure that you find the right person that will give you that trust and feeling of these people will be taken care of in order for you to actually let go in the right way so that they can serve the clients and serve you and themselves in the best way. So in the beginning, I, we had some struggles because I would not let go, right? I was in my own way and always trying to be too controlling. And um, so anyway, let me go there. Okay, so, oh, I forgot I have this up here too. <laughs> I keep looking over there. Okay, so what is it about this production partner is that they want stability and security by having a set salary that they can count on. So unlike, so in my mind, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, go out, you know, you can make a ton of money. Don't you want to do that? I was almost like trying to sell uh, my production partner on that. And he was like, no, not really. I don't, I don't really care about that. But what he really cared about was, um, you know, being a part of something bigger. So he wanted to be a part of something bigger and wanted to be a big contributor. He said, I, I just want to make like $75,000 and maybe at some point I'd make 100,000. So I was like, oh, okay. So I felt like doing the math, that actually could work. So somewhere between that, um, usually the production partners are not big risk takers. They really are risk averse, right? And they don't like to prospect. So the idea of just coming in and being like client services is so much better to them than having to go out and try to find business. Um, like I said, enjoys being a part of a team. And the production partners that I've had are fiercely loyal, very loyal. They'll jump over backwards to do all kinds of stuff um, for, for me. So if you find the right one, that's what you get. You'll be gifted with that. Um, they want to do meaningful work. And they like, whoops, let me go there. They like mentorship and wants to feel competent with all of the things that they do. So they want to, like, you know, you have to train them, but also make sure that you provide them additional resources beyond you to do it because they are life learners, okay? Um, their love language tends to be acts of service, okay? And um, they want service done to them, but also they dish out the service, which is great. Clients love them for that. Um, they find fulfillment in helping others and they tend to be introverts. So unlike me, I'm a total extrovert. I get my energy off of people and I really don't get tired of it, which is weird. People are like, don't you get tired? I'm like, eh, not really, I like being around people. So I don't get tired of it, but the, they are introverts, but they are high eye. But at the end of the day, they really need to decompress and they need their time. So you have to give them that space because I was always like, ah, you know, like all, and they're like, no, I, I kind of need my space. <laughs> so you have to give them space. Um, they, again, are client service oriented and has great communications. So I just wanted to show you guys my three that I had. Okay, so we got Taylor, Paul, and Sarah. Amazing um, 
you know, and each of them, again, I mentioned before, retention is a, a great thing. Taylor was with me about five years. Paul is still with us, but he graduated into kind of agent role, buyer's agent role, but was with me in this role for almost five years. And then Sarah's my newest person who's been amazing. So, okay. So what's their job description? It's very simple. They basically are, they're, they're an agent. They're a team agent. They do everything that a team agent would do. They're, they provide a concert level customer experience. They show homes, host open houses. They write offers, attend home inspections, closings, you know, all of those things. They're the negotiators too. And they even do listing coordinator tasks. So my production partner does both, buyers and sellers. Um, I've heard of other people that kind of divide it up, but mine does both. Um, they even capture, um, actually, hold on. Yeah, they even capture like behind the scenes for social media. They capture a lot of like pictures and things that we can do for marketing before and after because they're always out there. They take pictures so that we can use for like closings and stuff like that. And they're basically an extension of you. So you have to make sure that you trust them and they are a good representative of who you are and your brand. Okay, so the big question everybody always asks is, how are they paid? How do you pay them? So I mentioned before, salary, right? So you gotta come up, and it depends on the area that you're in, but for in our area, about $42,000 is their annual set salary, and then they make bonuses above that. So there's three opportunities for them to make bonuses that can really raise up their amount so that they make closer, on our team, about 85 to 100,000. So, uh, the bonus one is basically 7%. They get 7% for every closed transaction that they help me with. And then uh, they also serve as showing agents from time to time for other agents on our team. And if they help with anything like that, they get 2% on the net uh, commission for, for that transaction. Um, the other income opportunities that they have is that they also can give referrals. And if they give referrals to the team, so we, we do encourage them to prospect, they don't have to, but if they do, or they have their friends, their SOI, they can get paid 25% um, on that. And then if they're the ones that are helping to serve it, another 7%. So, you know, we kind of covered this a bit, but why should everyone have one? And so I think the big thing that you should know is in 10 years that I've had one, started with Taylor, then Paul, then Sarah, in 10 years, I've made a little bit over three and a half million dollars by having this person in that role. I mean, that's pretty significant, don't you guys think? That's 350,000-ish per year, so you should look at it as another pillar of your business, right? You should have this person because they help you with leverage and just really allows you to build a sustainable and profitable business because I think yesterday I heard a lot of people talk about it, but in conversations, what are some of the struggles that people are having right now? They have issues with profitability, um, overhead costs, and things like that. That has never, because of my production partner, been a concern for us. We've never had issues with being worried about paying our people or paying any bills or anything like that. So the really important thing that um, came out of this is allowing me to be really still close to my sphere of influence, my past clients and referrals. So I don't give that up to the you know, team. Our team gets tons of leads from other sources, but not my sphere, not my past clients or referrals. Um, again, look at it as another pillar of your business. Think about it like this, if you could make another $350,000 on a business that you're already well-versed on and have all the systems for, why wouldn't you do that, right? Like, and you don't have to be in, like it's, you're in production, but you're not really in production. You're basically taking calls as needed if they really need you. But if they're, you know, if you train them well, they don't really need you much, right? So, so that is just amazing, um, I think, another pillar of business that you should consider. And from all that extra money, what have we done with it? We put it into this bucket and we allocate it to other things that we want to explore and do. So anytime there's like a great thing that comes up um, with marketing and stuff, we uh, jump in and we're like, yeah, we want to and we don't have to be worried because we have you know, the funds to do it. Um, the other thing that's great about it, it allows you to stay relevant. When you're in this um, and you're spending time in it and you're hearing about the transactions and you're copied on these messages, which I'm copied on the messages, you kind of see what's happening out there so that you can train the other agents where you're actually in, I, I say I'm in the trenches, even though you know, I'm not the one showing the houses, I'm not all out there, but I see everything that's happening so that I can train the agents better on our team. Um, 
It does buy you back your time, right? It allows you to work on other parts of your business. And in my case, like I was working on building my, the Capital Growth Pioneers Group. That's how we got to 164 agents there because I have time to do that. I have time to travel to conferences like this. And you know, they're working on that while we're here. So it was a no-brainer. Um, you know, me personally, these are some other things that were important to me. It gave me more time to spend with my family. I don't miss any of my kids' games. I used to, but then I stopped. I didn't miss any of my kids' games, recitals, or volunteer opportunities. I got to go to Costa Rica with my son's like class when he was in fifth grade. Um, we travel more with our family and friends. And we, I set a goal when I um, did this in 2014. I set a goal that we were traveling on six significant trips every year. We go on six significant trips every year. And we travel, like I said, to conferences like this, um, more time to lead the team, more time to build and develop my EXP organization, more time for coaching. So now I'm an accelerator coach for Agent Academy. I can do that because I have Sarah helping me with my production. She, by the way, is putting in two offers today. So um, she just texted me and said, by the way, we're probably going to get it. I'm like, yay, I don't even know for who, right? So that's how awesome. <laughs> so that was really good. Um, and then um, I have more time to focus on the things that, you know, I'm, so health and wellness is another bad thing for me. I don't really always pay attention to that. I just run, run, run and do all the things. I'm not the healthiest eater and all that. So now I can focus on that. And um, I really love tennis and golf, so I get to do that more. Um, and did I mention it's very profitable? So something to think about. And it funds, being profitable funds a lot of other things like the fun stuff in our lives. So here's a picture of, us, when we went back to Vietnam, I took my kids there with my husband to explore and figure things out in 2017. So some pictures and things so that they could see you know, my heritage, where I'm from. And while I was there, that's how I started to find out a lot more history and some stories that I had no idea about. Um, so I was very happy that we got to go. And that was on spring break. So this is the other thing that's so important. I don't want to not go when my kids are off of school. So I go on their spring break. Doesn't matter, it's the most expensive time to go. Doesn't matter. I go during their um, breaks, you know, like their uh, winter breaks. That's like the crazy, we just went to Turks and Caicos because they wanted to go to beaches. And I was like, oh my God, like beaches was like a total expensive place, but that's what they wanted. So we go there during those times. And so anyway, this was an amazing trip that we got to do. And the other amazing thing um, that it afforded me to do was I got to um, go with my siblings last year to Prague because we really didn't have vacation. So we went to Prague together um, in September So and, and Ireland. And so we got to do our family vacation that we didn't really get to do when we were kids. So <laughs> thank you. OK. So um, the other thing I wanted to show you, just for comparison's sake, so let's do the math because I know that's really important. Um, on average, our top agents on our team are doing about 15 million in production. Because of my production partner, I'm always the top agent on the team, which is crazy, right? But like, I'm, we're usually doing 25 to 30 million. One year we did 40 million, and you know that was the, the production partner. But for simple math, I'm going with the top agents on my team. Average is about 15 million. So at two and a half percent average commission, it's 375,000. Divide 50-50%. You know, the team keeps 187,500. But check out the production partner model, right? With the 7%, the team keeps 348,750, right? So, I mean, again, no brainer on this. Just check out the math. And I always thought, like, how weird. Like, don't they see what hap what's happening here? Are they okay with this? Like, it was this weird disconnect for me because I'm, I guess I look for opportunities. So when I see that, I would be like, oh my gosh, I want that. They actually don't want that. You know, not everybody wants what we want. Not everybody wants to be us, right? So, but I was like, was it kind of afraid? Like, they're going to closing. I'm not going to closing. And they see the settlement statement. But I kept thinking that. And this weird thing that bothered me. So I would have conversations with them. And they're like, no, I'm good. Um, but anyway, so Paul now is actually on our team. And I actually encouraged him to kind of go out and do it. Because he was starting to enjoy it. And he was getting a lot of clients on his own. So it's not like I want to push people out, but I was like, this is a great opportunity for you. I, I want to see more for you. And he's going to be helping and mentor and teaching other people. And what we're going to try to do is have him help other people on our team also have their own production partner 
and you know showing agents and stuff. We use showing agents on a different level, but um, and, and that I encourage you guys if you don't have that now or if you um, or don't have a production partner and you're not ready to jump in, use showing agents. That's agents that are in your office that don't um, have a lot to do. They basically, you pay them, they can help you, um, they'll be motivated to help you, and then hopefully, you know, the way that we pay for showing agents that are not on these salaries is basically $25 an hour, and if it closes, um, sometimes you can pay like Shawami, I don't know if you guys know Shawami, you don't even have to pay a bonus if they, um, you know, close, so you can just use that app Shawami and then go, but what we were doing on our team was basically $25 an hour, and if it closes, we paid them the 5%. The agent that used them pays the 5%. So that gives them incentive to want to do it. So I'm like, that's the best kind of paid intern. That's what I kind of pitched to the team. Like, you're a new agent. You should be out doing this. Imagine when I was a new agent, I wanted to do this, and I was doing it, and nobody was paying me. Now someone else, a team member, needs your help. You should go help this person, and you could get paid. You're learning about it, and you're getting paid at the same time. How awesome is that? So that's the showing agent um, you know, situation. But the, the beautiful thing about production partner, going back to why that is so important, is because you have this one person that takes care of all your clients, is truly an extension of you, and then you don't have to worry about um, you know, you know, your sphere taking, being well taken care of. Um, you know, Because with Showami, you don't really know exactly who you're getting all the time. OK, so how do we roll this out to our clients? So you got to make sure that you roll it out in the right way. Um, you want to introduce the production partner as early as possible in conversations. So you get a call from a past client, you get a call from you know, your sphere, somebody calling you about it. You want to mention them right away, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for you to meet Sarah. She's amazing, you're going to love her. And so you got to edify them right in that way. Make sure that they know that you love them <laughs> and you trust them to be with them. And, and I always say, like, she knows way more than me, you, you know, and you know me. I'm so chatty. Like, when you go with her, she's all about business. She'll get it done. And, and she's very sweet and, you know, all these things. So I, I basically kind of let them know that, and then they feel good about it. Um, how I stay in the loop, I'm copied on all the messages. I don't read all of the messages. So the reason why I'm copied on it is so that they know that I'm part of it. At any point, I can jump in. But I have the separate email that, we, that I'm in a group that I, I'm copied on it so I can jump in at any point to look at any of that stuff. I'm always kept in the loop. And one of the important things that we need to know, I learned this, um, you know, is that in our roles as team leaders, that you really want to feel in control, but you should not be in charge. What does that mean? You have to have someone that you trust that makes you feel like you're in control. You know what's going on, and then you can just go about and do your business, right? But they're in charge. You're not in charge. If you're trying to still be in charge, you really aren't letting them do it the right way, and you're still not going to feel the power of a, you know, the partnership of a production partner. So make sure that you uh, let them be in charge. OK. Um, I am involved in some offer strategies and negotiations as needed, so you have to make yourself available for them. And I typically don't attend any of the buyer appointments or anything like that. And I don't answer any of the messages. Um, and then, let's see what else. Lastly, I mentioned before, a production partner goes with me on listing appointments and stuff. So I still do go on listing appointments. Not all, but on, um, we have some high dollar clients. I do do those. And um, if she goes on them, oftentimes she'll FaceTime me while she's there. There's properties that we've sold that I've never even stepped foot in. All right? So, my time is over, so I just wanted to <laughs> time for you guys to get production partners. Hopefully, um, you know this has been helpful, and uh, hope you guys have an opportunity to get someone like that in your life because they really have changed mine in so many ways, and not only um, you know financially, but really uh, what they did for my family has just been incredible in the time that we gained back. So thank you, everybody. Thank you.